A few months back, I made a video where I was talking about how I use UV resin to smooth my PLA printed helmets and armor. And to say that it changed my life is putting it lightly. <laughs> Pretty sure that it changed my husband's life as well because now our cars and the garage and everything in the garage is no longer coated in a thin layer of Bondo dust. So points to UV resin for that. This method is still fairly new to me. I have made a lot of mistakes, but I've learned a lot of things from those failures and I've kind of fallen into more of a, I guess you could call a routine whenever it comes to using UV resin on my 3D printed I figured it was time for me to walk you through that routine and walk you through everything that I've learned so far. I'm going to be taking a raw 3D printed Bo-Katan shoulder and turning it into a, a, a finished Bo-Katan shoulder that I can actually wear on a costume. Before I start with this walkthrough and tutorial, I am going to round up all my supplies. And as always, they are linked down below for you if you don't want to like write them down or anything like that. And there's going to be a lot of non-negotiables on this list. And I know it looks like a really long list whenever you open up that description bar down below. There are things here that you absolutely need and you should not work with UV resin or any type of resin without these safety measures first. These are the supplies you're going to need for applying and working with the UV resin. You're going to need a respirator and like I said before, that is non-negotiable. If you are working with resin, you need a respirator and you need one that has filters that are rated for fumes. You're going to need some nitrile gloves, another non-negotiable. You should not be handling uncured resin without gloves. Even when it's cured, your best bet is to still wear gloves. You're also going to need some safety glasses, some foam brushes to apply our resin with. We're going to need some disposable cups to pour our resin into. We're going to need something to cover our workspace with and avoid those resin drips. I'm just using some brown craft paper and then we'll need our UV resin. I use this Elegoo Mars with a nanometer of 405 nanometers and that's important whenever it comes to picking out the UV light that you use. You need to make sure that those two numbers match. We'll also need a UV curing chamber or just some UV lights or you can even use the sun if you like. We'll need some paper towels. I use these blue shop towels as they leave less lint behind. We'll also need some 91 to 99 percent isopropyl alcohol and optional you can pour this into a spray bottle if you like. I have mine in this Urban Decay makeup like spray thing and I swear I really got to label it because there's going to be one day that I'm I'm gonna pick that up and I'm gonna spray it on my face and it's not gonna be a good time. And these are the supplies we'll need to sand, smooth, and paint our piece after everything is done with the resin process. We need a mouse sander with 120 to 240 grit sanding pads, some filler primer, any of the paints that you'll be using, and in my case I'm using a variety of Montana Gold spray paints. I'll have them linked down below for you guys but I've got shock black, shock white, silver chrome, and sky blue. This is also an optional item but I have a latex medium that I'm going to be using to add a chipping and weathered effect to our piece. And this is also completely optional, but I have some Night Owl decals that I bought off of Etsy from Van Oaks Props, but you can hand paint these or make a stencil. I actually did a mix of the two of this for my Clone Wars Bo-Katan shoulder, so it can be done. <laughs> so first we're going to need to print out our piece of armor to work with. I'll link my Kira settings and the models that I'm using down below, but once I've got that situated and sliced, it's giving me an estimate of about five hours and some change of print time. Next up, we'll just load it onto our printer and let it go for a few hours, and through the magic of editing, we've got our first shoulder piece ready for some cleanup. Because I print with rafts, they will tend to leave a bit of a rougher texture on the bottom of your print, but it's pretty easy to clean up. I just use a wood burning tool and run the barrel along the bottom to partially melt the plastic and remove the rougher edges. Just make sure that you're wearing a respirator when you're doing this. Once our print is all cleaned up and free of support material, it's time to bring out the UV resin. Like I mentioned in the beginning, make sure you're wearing your respirator. You should be wearing that if you were doing the wood burning tool thing earlier. And make sure you've got some nitrile gloves and you're working in a well ventilated area. Preferably you should be outside, but if you can't be outside, make sure you've got a window and you've got a fan going. You'll also want to make sure that any pets or children nearby are out of the room as well. Make sure that your workspace is covered so as to avoid any spillage of the resin and shake up your bottle of resin. Then we're going to get out a disposable cup and pour just a little bit of resin. This stuff goes a long way and you can always pour more into your cup if you need to. Then we're just going to take a foam brush and start painting on a thin coat of resin, making sure to get all the sides and bottom bits of our piece. I don't believe that UV resin has self-leveling properties, but please feel free to correct me down below. And I mean that, I just can't find any credible information about it. So I just concentrate on trying to make this layer of UV resin as even as I possibly can. Once you're satisfied with your first coat, pour any unused resin back into your bottle and then set this cup aside. We'll be curing this remaining resin alongside our 3D printed piece because you should never throw away uncured resin. At this point, you want to grab your UV chamber or UV lights and we're going to set both our 3D printed piece and cup inside for 15 minutes to cure. Once those 15 minutes are up, we're going to check on the curing of our resin. And as you can see here, it looks like it's not cured, but it actually is. It's leaving fingerprints behind whenever I'm touching it, but what happened here is called oxygen inhibition. The resin layer at the very top of our model will never fully cure due to this phenomenon. And I explained this a little bit better in a video that I'll link up above for you. But all we have to do to combat this is to get out our isopropyl alcohol. 
I like to take 91% isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle and spray it all over my 3D print, then I'll wipe it away with a blue shop towel. The isopropyl alcohol is essentially removing that uncured resin that will never fully cure no matter what we do, and it will allow us to handle the piece safely. You'll know you've quote unquote got it all off whenever your gloves no longer stick to the surface or leave behind any fingerprints. Now that we've got all the uncured resin off of our piece, I like to go back in and do a second layer of UV resin. You can experiment here and find out how many layers is best for you. You'll see that I do about two layers before filler primer and then I'll do another layer on top of that, but that's just my method. You might find that you don't need all these layers of UV resin like I do because again, I print with a pretty rough layer height and you might be printing with something lower. Once the second coat is on, we'll repeat the same steps as before and then we're ready for some sanding. I use 120 grit sandpaper on a mouse sander to, well, sand the piece down. <laughs> I go in circular-ish motions and try not to linger on one spot for too long. It's hard to sand down through an entire layer of this stuff, but it is possible if you apply too much pressure, so just let your mouse sander do its job. Once I'm finished, I take my piece into my laundry room and rinse off the resin dust. But before I do that, and just to be on the safe side, I put a plastic bin over the drain so that I catch all of the water that rinsed off into my piece. I know that you shouldn't wash resin down the drain, and while this is cured and in dust form, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I then pour the water into a smaller container, and you really should use glass, but this was all that I had on hand. And then I go and take it outside and let it sit out in the sun so I can properly dispose of it later. I'll then return to my 3D printed piece and towel off the water, and then I place that out into the sun as well for about five minutes. Now I'm using PLA here and I also live in Pennsylvania and it's not too too hot outside that I'm worried my piece will melt but if you live somewhere super warm then you're probably better off just letting it air dry inside. After a few minutes my piece is dry and I'm going to put on a layer of filler primer. This step is optional but I do like to do it because it really helps me to see what areas on the print need more sanding or might need another layer of resin to fill in some gaps. I spray a light coat of it on, let that cure for 30 minutes and then I come back to see where things are at. So as you can see, the filler primer really brought out the bits on the piece that need a bit more love. And while you could continue with using something like Bondo or a similar filler, I decided I just wanted to do another full coat of resin on top. So I repeated all of the steps from before with painting on the resin, letting it cure for 15 minutes, sanding it down, and this time I was using 240 grit sandpaper, washing off some of the dust and then letting it dry, then giving it one last coat of filler primer, and then I'm finally ready to do my favorite part, which is painting. The weather has been absolutely perfect for spray painting lately and thank goodness because I have been itching to paint something for the past month and I've just had nothing to do. I'm going to be starting off with a black base coat of Montana Gold Shock Black and I let that cure out in the sun for about 15 minutes. That's kind of the beauty of Montana Gold. I found that I can let this cure for about 15-30 minutes at the most and it'll usually be totally fine for me to do my next coat. I then spray on a coat of Montana Gold Silver Chrome and I also let that cure for 15 minutes. And to be honest, I really enjoyed how this one was reflecting in the sun. Too bad it's just going to be Used for weathering. This next step is the most fun step in my opinion. This is where we're going to mask off spots on the shoulder piece to look like chip metal. I'm taking this Vallejo liquid mask medium and a Q-tip to apply the medium all around the parts of the armor piece that I think would get chipped off or away in battle. You can go crazy with weathering here, you can keep it simple, but I'll be honest, I tend to go pretty crazy. <laughs> this stuff dries super fast, about five minutes or less, and once that was dry, I once again took my piece outside to paint on a layer of shock white. You'll notice that I only applied this white onto the lower two thirds of the shoulder, and that's because I'm using a vinyl decal for the Night Owl logo that requires me to have a white backing. Since it's not on the entire piece, then well, there's really no sense in me using up more paint than I have to. I would also recommend letting this layer cure for longer than 15 minutes because of the tape masking that we're going to need to do in the next step. And in my case, it ended up being about four hours because my husband and I walked our dog and we decided to go down to the local brewery to have a couple of beers and one thing that led to the other and well, it was four hours later. Now for this Night Owl logo, we're going to need to mask out the white circle. To do this, I'm just taking some painter's tape and laying it down on my cutting mat, making sure to overlap the layers of paint. Terse tape. <laughs> I then take my vinyl decal and trace the circle onto the tape. Then I pull it up, cut it out with some scissors, and spend way too long affixing it onto my shoulder piece in the right position. Make sure that all of your edges are sealed as you possibly can to avoid any kind of bleed through from the paint we're about to put on top. And that paint that we're about to put on top is sky blue from Montana Gold. Personally, whenever I'm doing any kind of masking work, I like to pull up my masking tape as soon as I possibly can because in my experience, it produces cleaner lines. I mean, there's a lot of debate over this and obviously, as you can see here, I still had some bleed through, so do whatever works for you. I then let the sky blue layer cure for 15 minutes and I lay down my vinyl decal on top of the white circle. 
I then sprayed a little bit of that white spray paint onto some tape and touched up the bleed through that I had around the circle. Make sure that you clean your brush with isopropyl alcohol after so you don't ruin your brush. And then it was time for the other fun part, which was removing the latex masking. To remove this masking, all you have to do is run your fingertips or nails over all the spots that you dabbed on your latex medium, and it's going to reveal this really cool chipping effect on your armor. If you're having trouble getting this medium off with just your fingers, you can use like a metal spatula or a knife or just make sure it's like a butter knife, not like a, you know, kill someone knife. I try to avoid using sandpaper to remove it because at least with Montana gold paints, they tend to run and scuff whenever you take sandpaper to them at this phase, so I just try to avoid that. And that's all that there is to it, and it really only just needs a little bit of weathering, which I'll cover in another video. And this armor piece is ready for my costume whenever I finally start to sew the bodysuit, which maybe that'll happen this year, I don't know yet. <laughs> I hope this video helped you out in some way, and definitely let me know if you're going to try this method. Like I said, this has honestly changed my life whenever it comes to finishing my 3D prints. I can finish things so much quicker than before, and it's so much less messy. I know it sounds like a lot of upfront work of getting all the safety equipment, but honestly, you should have had that if you were working with Bondo anyway. I can just get through my 3D prints so much quicker with this method. As always guys, feel free to leave me any questions or comments down below. I do try to get back to every single comment that I get. It may be a couple days, but I will definitely try my best to get back to you. As always, thank you so much for watching and especially you for watching until the end. And I'll catch you guys next Wednesday for another video. Bye! Dad, is he getting beer? He's getting beer, bud. Oh my God, I almost knocked it over. <laughs> okay, see that was good. Oh, you're in the shot. Oh, you're in it. I can see myself in your glasses. <laughs>